Say good day, everyone. Hello. Hey, <laughs> um, today we're gonna go out and show you Cape Arnhem, and we're also gonna camp there for the night. I'm um, just doing coffees now, getting brekkies ready. We're gonna have an early morning, hit our schoolwork with the kids, and then we'll head out there and explore for the day. So, at the Gove Boat Club, we're gonna leave all our stuff here. So just pack up, leave our van in that here. It's all secure inside the gated area. You get a key card to get in, so you can feel safe to leave all your stuff here. Now it sounds like it's about an hour and a half drive to get out to Cape Arnhem, but there's a lot to see along the way. And I've been told that you want to try and hit it on low tide because you've got to do some beach driving to get there. So 12 o'clock is low tide. I think if we leave about 9.30, 10, that gives us time to cruise around, explore, and still hit the beach at low tide. Get there early Arvo, and we can spend the afternoon to show you around. And for us to have a look around, it's supposed to be really beautiful. So. Well, here's a good bit of info for you, dear. Nullum Boy has a Woolworths. Bing, there we go. So I know a lot so of people good. think like, yeah, we're coming to Arnhem Land. We've got to load up in Catherine and get everything we need, you know, for a couple of weeks. Well, no, you don't. You can um, just have enough for your few days on the central Arnhem Road, getting up here. Then you can buy bulk in Woolies yeah. in Arnhem Land, but don't go shopping on a Sunday. So it is open, but they they literally got no food in there. So their barge day is Monday, and by the time they unpack and um, restock the shelves, the best time to go is Tuesday morning. We've been told by the locals. Yeah. So, so we're, we're here on Tuesday, Tuesday morning. morning. <laughs> and you wouldn't believe it, the car park's actually full. Yeah. So everyone's same idea. But there you go, good info. It's BWS, Woolies. Um, yeah, it's got everything you need up here. It's a great little town. Yeah. Cape Arnhem. Now I'm going to tell you, bit of info because we've struggled to find the track back out of here. Google Maps was taking me somewhere silly but come back out uh, the Central Arnhem Road to the Stewart Highway turn off and then look you'll see that little sign there sticking up in the bush there's a track off to the left and you take that one and then uh, we'll head down this way you'll drive up the beach on low tide keen as. All right where are we going kids? Cape Harmon! Cape Harmon! <laughs> <laughs> they love it. Yeah. <laughs> and there's four campsites down there. You have to get a Dimaru access permit and you have to get uh, a camping permit. So it cost us nearly $200 for a month long um, access permit. And then you just pay depending on how many people on that uh, for your camping per night. But anyway, Don't book online, that. you get a digital copy of your, uh, what's it called, permit and make sure you have that on you because there's ranges and that that check. Mm. Anyway, I think it's gonna take uh, about an hour and a half from Gove to get out there. Um, probably, probably another hour for us now. Anyway, I'll stop and show you this. And Crocodile stinger. and stinger warning. Help prevent erosion. Drive only on the tracks, deflate your tyres, use barbecues provided, catch heaps of fish and don't get eaten by a crocodile. Sounds good to me. Jack goes on the job. What are we going to do, Jack? Tire pressure. Tire pressures. He's all over it. I showed you on the way in, we've got this app. Small. And we've plugged into here. But the good thing we do now, the kids can do it. They run around, they take the valve caps off. Then all I have to do is plug the chuck on for me. And uh, away she goes. We're gonna go down to um, 20 PSI for this track and the beach. Uh, that's what it said on the sign, so it mustn't be too soft. Um, normally I run my tires at 18 on the beach um, and you can go down lower if you need it, but 18's normally enough. So there you go. I'm gonna let the kids do it. It's handy, eh? Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, karma, eh? Now <laughs> she's in the driver's seat. She's doing the drive off on me. Do you reckon she'll do it again? Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, I do deserve that. I'll give her that. <laughs> I bet the kids are absolutely laughing their asses off in there. Anyway, <laughs> I do deserve that. All right. You've had your fun. Ha uh ha. -huh. <laughs> See you, 
Oh. You know, I, I've always said this to Beck, but she's always one to take things too far. Oh she's my god! <laughs> this way, so Justin just takes it like again. Like, oh. uh, are you been driving with the handbrake on? No, it's because I've got no seatbelt on. Oh, that's even better, isn't it? <laughs> Good one. Today's a special day. Beck's going to drive. What do you reckon about that, dear? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Oh, I'm a little bit worried. Why? Oh, you know. That I'm a very good, careful driver. Yeah. Cautious driver. Oh, so we're worried about the wildlife jumping out in front of you. Oh. Yeah, this is kind of nice. Let the wife drive, see how many pinstripes we can get on the rig. Oh, you can get car sick. Oh, mate, I don't get car sick. Wait. We'll see. I should, uh, we should switch roles, see how much I can whinge in the passenger seat. What are you reckon about that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Val. Oh, that's me. Hey, I'm going to give you a bit of a um, product info demo on our drive out to Cape Arnhem, just because I'm in the passenger seat and I feel like I'm bored actually because I'm not driving. But <laughs> it's, it's not often I don't drive. Uh, we've got an Oricom in our car. We've been using them for like four years now, and this is the DTX 4200X. So the good thing we like about this one is that it's dual channel receive, so you can travel. Oh, like if you're on the tracks with your mates like this, you could have channel 40, so you can talk to everyone else. And you can also have, if you swap, channel 14 or channel 12, and then you can talk to you, or you can listen to your convoy, and you can listen to other users, but you can only transmit on one channel. So if you're on 14, you can transmit on 14, or you can swap it to 40 and transmit on 40. So that's what I like about it mostly. I really like that dual receive function, but what they've done with the updated one is that the handpiece is bigger, it's easy to use, the screen's brighter, and the microphone is actually louder and better. Fits really well in the hand, and you can change the color here if you don't like blue as well. You can have green or red or whatever, you can change it out. Anyway, good little jog wheel, this little wheel here, you press the button to change your channel up and down, or your squelch up and down, or your volume up and down, you just tap it. So it's easy one button control with your thumb, and away you go. All right, that's oh. enough. Way, there's track coming the other way. That's enough product fashion for you. I'll put an inf I'll put a discount code in for you below. Um, I'll see if he's on channel. Hey, where do I go? That's handy. Yeah, keep coming, mate. You'll get around us. There you go. How good's that? Pull up in there, Beck. Where? If you drive up in the bush there. In the bush. <laughs> there you go. Good to have a two-way. There you go. There's a truck coming. Well done, dear. Thanks. Hey, what's one of your hot tips, Bearsy? I don't have one. Uh, what do you got, one, Bill? Don't drink the yellow water. Oh, that's a good tip. <laughs> All right, we're about to hit this low section. Beck's going to drive it. I'm going to take a few photos, but I'm going to leave this camera here on Beck so you can see not only her face, but you can talk them through the downhill descent. Dear, what do you reckon? Well, I don't do too many downhill descents, so. See how we go. Turn that radio down. I'll walk down the track a bit, get some photos of you. Sorry, I'm in four low. You're in four low? Yeah. Right. I can't, I can't, my mirrors are back, so nothing's behind me. You got a reverse camera, do you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shows how much I drive. Do you reckon Mum can do this, guys? Yeah. Who said not really? Billy. Oh my god. Okay, Billy. No, no, Have I'm some with faith Billy. in your mother. I'm with Billy, not really. I said you, yeah, you can. Oh my god, driver team. Yes, you're awesome. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, I don't think okay. so. Okay. Scary. Don't be scared. Okay, I'm not scared. <laughs> I'm not a baby, where? I don't like this. I don't like this, Mama. I've been down scary things. We'll be fine, team. Mum's a gun driver. Woo! I'm not scared at all. Dad's better. Mum is nailing this. Look at me go. Wow, look at that view. Wow, focus on the road. <laughs> Good call, Rui. Well I know. I'm giving mom, hey. Dad, I'm giving mom High five. Nice. Kids felt, oh sorry. Oh, you missed. Kids felt unsafe Ooh, hey. the whole time. Some way to keep fit, eh? Chase the four-wheel drive mind, down yeah. a steep incline. Oh, my God. At least we weren't going up. I'm going to give mum an eight out of ten. Eight out of ten? Nine out of ten. It's oh, not too bad, eh? Really? I'm going to give you a ten out of ten, dear. Aww. If you can hear me, it's a little bit windy up here, but this is the last section of the track leading onto the beach. You should see this, mate. 
hey? That was really nice. It went through a bit of sandy stuff, bit of rocky stuff, bit of steep descent. There's a beautiful look out at the top, some pandanus forest, and now we come out of this little sandy track onto the beach. Oh, mate. I'm so stoked, eh? This is so nice. It is unbelievable. Hey, up we go, and we're out onto the beach, mate, at Cape Arnhem. Oh, how good does that look? <laughs> oh, the sand, the water. Oh, the epicness, the remoteness. Way, the rockiness. Happy days. Here we go. Now it's just a bit of a beach run down to the campsite. We'll show you what that looks like, eh? Alright, so we're on the beach. I just want to show you, this is why you want to try and time it with the tide chart to hit it on low tide. So have a look where we are now. Super easy, nice and hard. Once you get up the top there, oh look, there's an old TV. <laughs> um, once you get up the top there, it's super soft. So you don't want to be battling that all the way down the beach if you can just pick the tides and come then. So one other thing we're going to do while we're up here is a bit of a clean up. I've got some of my rubbish bags with me. I'll show you through them again. Uh, it's good to carry a few of those with you. We can pick up what we can while we're here and take it back and put it in the bins. I know um, what they do really well up here, East Arnhem has like a community of people that clean up and go and do beach cleanups very regularly. So it's all just stuff that gets washed in, like fishing nets, um, squid jigs from commercial long oh and squid God, jigs over in snake Indonesia snake and stuff. Yeah. And there's TVs and plastic and bottles and everything. So we'll just pick up what we can while we're up here because this place is so damn beautiful. You want to leave it better than when you come here, that's for sure. All right, let's go. We'll be at the campsite soon. Happy about that, dear? Oh, yeah. She did well, hey? Yeah. Eh? Well done, dear. Thanks. Well done on the drive, and everyone say, well done, Mum. Well done. I gave her an 8 out of 10. So I gave her a 10 good. out of 10. Thanks, I got a Bill. I Giddy gave up. her a trillion out of 10. A trillion. Thanks, Bezzy. Well, there you go, mate. This is site four at Cape Arnhem. Have a look at it. We got rope strings, we got fire pits, we got tables. So good. We got views. We're gonna have a sunset. We are. Oh, this is killer. This is west, so. We're gonna um, cook up some lunch now. I'm gonna throw all the gear down. Yep. And we'll slowly set up and we'll show you what we're gonna um, sleep in tonight. What's for lunch? Wraps. Wraps. Easy. Happy days. Ham salad wraps. We'll get you the table down, my love. Thank you. Righto, here's what I've brought with me. I bought our chairs from home. Whoa, my fishing rods, bag of firewood, and our table and chairs to set that up. Um, so I'll throw all that down. The miso can set it up. We can crack into a bit of lunch here. This is epic, mate, eh? Probably took us um, a good two hours, hey, to get in here. That's just cruising. So it's nice, it's real nice. Hungry. Sorry, dear, she's up me. <laughs> Look at you go. <laughs> you actually get something done. <laughs> Have a look at this, mate. Wow. What do you reckon of this spot, boys? I'm going to run you through the camping gear we've got for this trip. Now you're going to say, hey, where are the swags and all that? Well, you know what? Swags are bloody unreal, but we have outgrown them. Our three kids do not fit in one double swag anymore, and I cannot carry three double swags. So what we've done, or what we're going to try, we ducked in down to Condor in Darwin, and they helped us out there with some lightweight 
small, compact, easy to set up tents, all right? Now, the swags are our best option <coughs> because you don't have to carry all um, mattresses and sleeping bags and all that separately. And then, I don't know, we're like, what sort of tent can we have? We've had different tents over the years and we're like, let's try out like a hiking one because we only do overnighters and stuff when we leave the van anyway. So we're going to set these up now. I'll put in some info what they are. This one's a Denali Storm 3. I really know nothing about them. They just looked awesome packed up and they looked awesome set up. So we're going to put them up. We got one for us, one for the kids. And we go back to the old blow up mattress, mate. The old Coleman Queen mattress. We're going to pump that up and um, see how many holes the kids can put in it in one night. All right, let's do it. All right, well, well, that wasn't too hard. No. How we got through that without anyone having a major bust up. There you go. It's just a couple of little clip together poles. And um, yeah, they just go in the little holes and up she goes, peg her down. Uh, we're not gonna put the fly on. Uh, hopefully it doesn't rain on us tonight, but it's a nice breeze. Uh, it's still hot too overnight, so we'll leave the fly off for now. That's cool. There you go. That's one. We'll get the other one up and then I'll throw the mattresses in and um, get the kids on the foot pump and pump that up. I can use the compressor too on the ute if need be. All right, kids, who's blowing this up? Me! I haven't. Hey, Beck, how long since you've slept on an inflatable mattress? You, you, oh, maybe never. <laughs> no, we slept on We used years. to have them. No, we used to have them, but I cannot remember the last time we've it, been camping with one of these. It no, but us, when oh. we go on a camping trip, Jack. Oh. I just don't know. So the plan was, this is a rough plan, we just bought a queen size one, two of them, one for each um, tent, and then hopefully we can just all share, yeah? Ooh. Sort of makes sense in my head, but whether or not it works or not, let's see how we go. We'll try and flip this out and see what, um, see what happens. It's easier using your legs, but right. I've got better patience. See you in about an hour. Don't tell the kids. <laughs> We're pumped. Literally. <laughs> oh, did you beat me or what, kids? Yeah, we you did. did. Oh. Good job, kiddos. You know what energy I was just thinking, energy. though? Um, energy. I don't know if I'll get this in the doorway now that it's pumped up. <laughs> oh, that's so... You'll have, to, you'll have to spin it the other way, Bear. Mum, yeah. that looks like a waffle. Oh. <laughs> it does look like a waffle, doesn't it? Oh, I'll have me. to get in and sit in a floaty waffle. Better luck. It's you have to just bend it in half. It's not going to fit. It'll fit. Jack, come here. Dad's probably going to need some help. Chuck, can you hold this love? Yep. Here we go. It's going in. That's what I was thinking of. Oh, up. It's got to go, yeah, the other way. It's probably going to twist around. <laughs> Hot tip for young players, put it in the right way before you blow it up. Hey? Oh. Well, you can't, you have to ring the compressor. Oh, hang on. I'm I did get... say that we haven't used one for a while. Way, oh, there go all the pegs. Here we go. You need to use J U S T I N. Oh, it's in. How'd we go? We're all going to sleep in here together, are we? Yep. Good job. That looks comfy. It is comfy. Yeah. Nice. You all had to bring your soft toys out of the caravan, too? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What a view. Look at this view out your window. You ready? Soft toys. Can't wait to get Protus from in there tonight. Like, I'm gonna have my cuppa in there in the morning. Cuppa in bed. <gasps> it's gonna be beautiful. Camping at its finest, mate. <laughs> There's still no, well, you can hold me to it. I don't think there is a perfect setup for everything. You know what I mean? Like, we live in the caravan full time, which is perfect for that. And then when we come away camping, you know, you haven't got a rooftop tent on because we carry the tinny and we can't carry the double swags now because they don't fit everybody in it. Um, I don't know. I just, it's really hard. I'm trying to think, I reckon you need like a real lightweight rooftop tent that sits under your tinny and it folds out and fits all five years in there. That'd be pretty cool. But then you get too heavy with your GVM. Like everything's a balance. I just, um, I don't know. This is working really well. It's just the effort of putting it all up and down, that's all. I, um, I really like those self-inflating mattresses, like the camp mats, but then when they pack down, they're like big and sort of thick, you know what I mean, to get a comfortable one. So yeah, anyway, I'm still chasing that ultimate 
camping setup for these couple of nights away from the caravan while we're traveling. If you've got any ideas, hit me up. Phil just said I want it to be bed time already. That's pretty cool. That looks comfy, doesn't it? Kids are stoked. All right, I've got a couple of mud crabs there in a hessian sack. I'm going to go and um, brain them and clean them up in this salt water. Ready to cook on the campfire later on. There you try and light it back. Yeah, I'll give it one. Yeah. How good's this, mate? There's the campsite. Here's the water. High tide's going to come right up here on the sand. Got me hessian sack, a couple of muddies. I went hooking the other day. I'm going to go out right here and clean them up. Get them ready for the fire. This is nice, eh? Hey? There must be like... It's all these big shells on the fire. Look like they're mussels or big pippies or something. People must be eating those off the fire. But, uh, oh, the water is that nice down here. You're kidding. Oh, the temperature. The whole idea of keeping them in the hessian sack um, tied up keeps them alive. So just overnight, only caught them yesterday. But keep them in the sack, keeps them protected, alive, fresh, nice and cool. And then, you can flip them over and brain them right before you break them up and clean them. Now, I got told by Azza, he reckons if you put them in the freezer to put them to sleep, like a lot of people do, makes the, the meat inside stick to the shell, which then sort of makes them harder to crack and eat, and you waste a lot. So best to just keep them alive until you're gonna about to cook them, and then just kill them and cook them straight away. That's how it's done. Just give them a good stonk between the eyes with a sharp knife, Puts them out of their misery straight away. Yeah. I showed you how to clean sandies at Paluby exactly the same way with a muddy underneath. Come in here, Jack. Jack's on the camera. Yeah. You flip up the shell underneath here and you peel the whole back shell off. Now, they're a lot harder with a mud crab. You actually have to put in a fair bit of effort to get that off. Here we go. The same thing, all the guts and that go. Now, a lot of people eat, eat these things. They're their lungs, like um, in Asian dishes and that. They reckon they're the bomb, all this jelly inside and the, the lungs, but for me, I, yeah, I don't rate it. So what you do is just clean all the bits off, like so, pull all these lungs off, and then same as the sandy, snap it in half, like that. Yeah, fair bit of it. That's it, then you go out in the fresh salt water, pull all the guts out of it, yeah. and rinse it out, and then you've got some nice clean muddy, just like this one here. Look at that, eh? What a donkey. Look at the size of the claws on it. Yeah, it's yes. a big fat donkey. Anyway, we're going to cook them over the fire on a few coals later on uh, with a bit of sweet chilli on them. I'll pour a little bit of beer on top and we'll all have a chew yeah. on those, eh? What do you reckon, boys? You have a crack at that? Yeah. 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 Alright, that's it. That's how you clean them muddy. Just make sure you kill them properly first because you do not want one of those grabbing onto you, I tell you. If you haven't seen them before, we teamed up with Luke from Drifter to bring out some um, garbage bags because he's got a campaign, respect the beach, respect the bush. Now, it couldn't be more prevalent up here with the amount of rubbish that gets blown in with the tides and the wind. Um, we're going to take these around. We carry a few spares with us. Um, so if you ever see us and you want a bag, hit me up because I've got a few in the caravan. But they're, only, they're not for profit. You can jump on his website and buy them. Eight bucks for two. Oh, you might have to pay for postage, I'm not too sure. I'll put a link in here, but you can keep these. They're reusable. They got a Velcro thing on them. And then when you, look, we've got one swinging off the door over here of the car. That's our camp rubbish bin. And then I've got an extra one. And we're gonna go for a beach walk now. And I dare say we'll probably nearly fill this up. There's a lot of rubbish around here, but. It's terrible. What do you always say, Beck? <laughs> put her on the spot. What do you say, dear? Respect the, <laughs> Respect the beach. Respect the beach. I'm at the beach. Leave nothing but footprints. Oh, yeah. hey? And if you can take yeah. a few pieces of rubbish with you, it's going to be a whole lot better for the next people that come here, all right? Already we've picked up plastic spoons and alfoil and half-empty coke tins yeah. and stuff. Like, come on. It's not hard to clean up after yourself. Uh, if we can get everyone carrying these bags, imagine how good the campsites will be. All right, we're going for a walk on the beach. We'll show you what we end up with. See you. Goodness me. She was just trying to turn it off with her chin because she had a handful of chips. Are you actually serious? <laughs> How'd we go, dear? We killed it. Oh, it's not very something to be proud of. Well, it's proud to clean it up, but look at that. What a lid. That is a whole bag full 
of plastic, mate. I found the most. Rope, bottles, toothbrushes, toothbrush, toothpaste. Mate, and literally we walked from here. And I don't know, 300, 400 meters along the beach. And we had to turn around because we got nothing else to carry it in. Anyway, good job, kids. <laughs> it's better there in the bag than on the beach, isn't it? Happy days. <laughs> Such a child. Oh, that's your bum, eh? I'll show you these. I mean, this is, you can obviously eat these. There's like so many of them in the fire. They're like just a massive pippy, super thick shell. But there must be a um, nice little feed inside like an oyster. Because there's piles of them everywhere. Righto, crabs going on. Slap it on top. Get it in go the on, center. Drop it. And away we go. Now, I've already marinated it in a bit of uh, sweet chili. But as that gets going, I'm going to pour the rest of that in, top it off with a bit of beer, get it steaming around, and about 15, 20 minutes on the fire, I'll be able to pull it off and eat some mud crab. Happy days. How's your snuggle? Great. You'll be the captain. Cut, copy the king. I'll be the one. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, I'm gonna um, oh, look at that. Come and have a look at that. Mm. I'm gonna sit here. Mm. Smash this mud crab. Crab's ready. The boys are gonna help me. The good thing about Muddy for me is that Beck doesn't like it. <laughs> so whatever I catch, it's pretty much all mine. The boys have a little bit, but oh mate, I generally get it all to myself. Check out the size of that, would ya? That's a big claw. That is out of control. Ready? Hang on. Hang on. If that ain't a mud crab lollipop, I don't know what is. Look at that. Oh. Take that Sweet chili. Out. Is it really that good? Mud crab is so good. Beck don't believe me. It's so good. Have a bite. Mm. Good? Trying to crack this. <laughs> oh, Bilbo. He don't know. Mm. Mate, that is, that is good. Bill, I don't like it, so you don't have to either. Mm. That's good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. That's all mine. No, hey. no, no one's getting any. What? This is all my crap. You're joking. <laughs> it's alright. Lucky I've got some more. <laughs> mm. Have a look at this. When you crack the leg out. Look at this, look at this. Oh, that's the best bit, like this. I love that. Give it mm. to me. This is so good. That's amazing. Please go towards Denali. 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 Charlie, go that way. <laughs> ah, of course. It had to get a bit of wild weather while we were camping. Uh, hang on, I'll put this up, you can have a look, hang on. There we go. Do you see anything? There we go, we're gonna try and put the flies on. It's very hard, just saying. It's not an Arnhem Land camping trip unless you get a random storm, eh? We'll see how we go. I might get blown away. <laughs> I'm just trying to have a shower and <laughs> There's a bit of background noise going on. Yeah. And I'm like, Beck, just settle down, mate. She's like, no, there's something out there. And I'm like, well, there's no one here. I said, it might be a buffalo. 
And anyway, I'll grab the torch and have a look. And anyway, it's a bloody buffalo. Have a right. look at this. You can't see it now. You can. Look. Oh, you're joking. It's gone. Where the hell did it go? I promise you there was a buffalo there as I was having a shower. It was like chewing grass right there. <laughs> Naughty night. Hey, what a night. I hope the buffalo doesn't get you tonight. I know. I get, I get scared. <laughs> we did see a buffalo too. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's a bit windy. It's a bit yeah. wild. But we're nice and comfy in here. So. Kids are sound asleep just next to us. So. They yeah. are. We'll see you in the morning. Eh? I'm excited. I, I go to sleep dreaming of my morning coffee. Mm. Does anyone else? Seriously? Are you going to get up and make it? No. You are. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. I'm hoping, like, yeah, we'll see sunrise, hopefully. You won't see sunrise. You're yeah, dreaming. Yeah, I will. I'll see sunrise when I make her a coffee. That's about it. <laughs> no, I've left the front um, of the tent open so the sun will be, like, beaming and it'll wake me up. You're dreaming. The sun's going to come up from the opposite direction. Is it? Yeah. Anyway, anyway my plan is to I will up. show you sunrise in the morning while I make coffee. <laughs> Don't worry about that. <laughs> Naughty Good night. puppy dolls. Hey Barnum, of course, we cannot go camping without coffee. We did think about just bringing sachets and boiling the kettle, but honestly, it's just as easy to bring our whole little pod machine, so. There you go. I think you might want to want a triple this morning, you reckon? Um, <laughs> yeah. Didn't, um, I didn't have the best sleep last night, and it wasn't because we weren't comfortable. It was more because um, it was windy, and it was noisy, mm. and, um, well, I was having a shower before bed. There was a, a water buffalo at the back here. And then, I didn't tell Beck, but just before I went to bed, there was like a family of foxes or dingoes or oh, something was there? trotting past down the road here um, behind me. Lucky you didn't sat telling me I know, I didn't tell Beck last night. <laughs> so I then, was already scared. <laughs> every little noise I heard, I was like, what's that? What's that? Then the kids decided to unzip their... Um, tent and go to the toilet on their own so of course I freak up. out when I hear the tent zipping. Um, oh. yeah. Anyway, we'll be right. It's all part of the experience. The kids had a grand old time, they, they had a great did. sleep. They loved it. But uh, I reckon I could do with a bit of a nana nap with Savo. Hmm. We'll just set a couple of extra coffees might get me through. We'll see how we go. We'll be right. Um, Alright, what's the plan for Bricky? We just we have to go back to our sleep deprived days. Sleep deprived yeah. It's like we've got new kids again. <laughs> new boys. Well, I'm back on night shift. Yeah. Um, Bricky, what are we doing? Snacks? Uh, no, we're no? doing porridge. Oh, porridge. Big bulk family porridge. There you go. Yeah. No, not porridge, no cake wine. No. Bulk family porridge. Yeah. Fine porridge. I have to transfer the coffee into my cup because it's bigger. It won't fit under the coffee machine. <laughs> we got these. If you haven't, um, if you need like good <sighs> drinkware that keeps your stuff cold and hot, this Camelback gear is legit. <sighs> Righto. That was the Now for the pack up. <laughs> ah, I hate packing up. <laughs> Porridge for Brecky. What do you reckon? Mum's got the unlucky one. She's the unlucky one. We only bought three bowls and three spoons. So that looks appetizing. Porridge on a plate with a fork, dear. Yeah, hey, it works. <laughs> it's alright. Well, I'm going to use the wooden spoon in the pot, so... <laughs> ah, didn't think that through very well, did I? Alright, this is me. Ready? I feel like um, I'm Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Mm. It's good though. Yeah, it is nice. Right, oh, no, we're ready to go. What a night up at Cape Arnhem. I am so um, stoked that we got to spend a night out here. Like we said, it was only two days that we could actually choose one because uh, the bookings were all taken for the next few months and I can see why. Hey, we caught a little bit of wind. I didn't get any fishing done, I thought I would. I reckon if we look this way, if it wasn't so windy, 
on low tide you'd be able to walk out to the edge of the reef like the rocks there and actually flick plastics or metals off the side there i reckon you'd get some fish but um mate just to spend the night out here have a campfire eat some mud crab it's beautiful ridiculous mate ridiculous so we're going to plan to head back now follow that low tide mark so we can get along the beach but there's also i'll swing around here to get out of the wind there's also a place called oyster beach beck yeah and, and cave cave beach, beach or something yeah. so there's a turn off we've seen we'll go up there and we'll take you down and have a look at that on the way home back to our little base camp at go boat club show you this on the way out nice little dunny here if you don't carry your own yep there you it's go it's pretty clean too it does yeah i reckon it's well worth carrying your own though eh? oh absolutely like how much? hands down the amount of day trips that There's we do and papers. the kids go oh i need to go to the toilet yeah. you're like lucky we have one in the back i just think so, it's so handy for like campsites that are well used all the time oh yeah that you don't too. want to be like digging holes nah. all the time like nah when you go on number twos, it's nice to definitely have a Ours toilet. Ours was like, I don't know, 100 bucks or so oh, from Anaconda. You grab a little Bedford or Dometic toilet. Yep. Um, yeah, well yeah. worth the course. Especially the when you go up the beach for a day trip and things and the kids, yeah, need to do a, a poo. <laughs> um, oh, best ever, honestly. Well worth it. I remember. If I talked to you into bike, yeah. Never thought you'd talk so much about it. I know, I just realised. I really like You're having it. passionate a... about the tour. <laughs> well, I really, it's just all about comfort for me and convenience. So we got back to the beach. We need to drive along and there's still a little bit too much water on it, but that's okay. Because. <laughs> Check this out, mate. We have found this little bit of paradise. Oh my God. The water is that nice and clear. Oh, it's a best temperature and it's shallow for quite a way out. So you feel safe swimming here. Yeah. swimming here. I'll take you for a walk. These rocks are legit beautiful, hey. It's so nice. You coming in, Bill? Come on. Kids are loving it actually go for a swim it's not stinger season so you don't have to worry about stingers it's nice and clear and sandy oh so good check this out oh, oh there's a little deep hole here kids look at this Look at all the bait in the corner. Oh, look at this, it's like a little cave. Unreal. Look at that. This is epic. Check it. Whoa. Oh, I might have to get the rod off and have a flick. Lots of bait in there. This is beautiful. Ah, I'll tell you what, Arnhem Land's definitely worth the trek up. And we've only been here three days. Oh, it's a jack. Yeah. A mangrove jack. Look at that. Hey, off the beach. You're kidding. It's a you nice little fish, isn't it? You can probably keep him. On a soft five. There you go. You can probably keep him. You probably can. Oh, careful. You don't end up with a hook in your hand like Dad the other day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, oh, no, we're about to drive onto Oyster Beach. Have a look at this. Whoa. It's a good little. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oyster Beach. Um, all right, we can't actually take you and show you caves and Oyster Beach. Um, actually, I think this is Oyster yeah. Beach by the sign we just drove into, but I'll show you what's happened up here. Uh, the track, it's got a sign on it. It says area closed due to the passing of a senior TO. So please respect this cultural requirement. No worries. 
So obviously that's the track that takes you to Caves Beach. It's supposed to be cool with a couple of cliffs and you can walk like a little inlet in between them, we got told. But anyway, it's home time for us. Ah, oh, well there you go. That's our little trip out to Cape Arnhem, mate, and camping overnight. Hit us up with any comments, questions um, down below. We can try and help you out for your own travels up here, but I'll tell you what, it's a uh, pretty unique place. We haven't seen anything else like that around the country. All right, time to go home, back to Vanny. Just got it all in the saucepan. I slide yeah, it on top of my rack here. If you can. Yeah. Oh my God. Take two. Drop the bottle. So, <laughs> good to go. What a night up at Cape Armand, eh? Fire out.